How do you do? Most of us have gone through more than one trial in our lives, a time when we were sorely tested almost beyond endurance. The woman in this story went through decades of such testing with her own family. But the grief she endured tenderized her to care for all kinds of hurting people when her heart and mind and life were unshackled. This is Unshackled, true life stories that open the door to new life. Stories of real people dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. New life seems impossible to people who are homeless, surviving on the streets however they can. No one seems to care. But folks at Pacific Garden Mission care and provide a place to regroup and rest from their wandering search. Thanks to friends like you who send financial gifts, the mission provides nourishing meals and a safe place to sleep for hundreds of people with broken lives every day. Mission pastors and counselors share the good news that transforms any willing heart. And that transformation is what this program celebrates, going out to a darkening world. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is program number 3,532 in the series, Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. I never felt loved or wanted by my parents, especially mother. Though it was decades before I learned why, her rejection began when she became pregnant with me, before she married my father. Pregnant? Why weren't you careful, Betty? Don't blame me. It takes two to tango. But you're older than I am. I thought you knew more. I'm too young to be a father. You knew what you were doing. I'm telling you, I don't know how to be a father. Elliot, you have no choice. Isn't there anything you can do? No, you have to marry me. A discouraging way to start a marriage. There has to be a better way, and there is, as D. Duff discovered. This is her true testimony, right now, on Unshackled. My father ran off to New Orleans to escape his responsibility. But someone in the family traveled down there and hauled him back to Nebraska. And my parents married. They went to Illinois to live with Mom's sister, where Mom developed uremic poisoning and went into a coma just before I was born. My maternal grandmother took me home for a few months while Mom recovered. As a result, my mother didn't bond with me, especially since she and Dad didn't want children anyway. Listen to that little brat. She wakes herself up at night, so I'll have to get up and hold her. And here I am expecting again. How am I supposed to handle two of them? My sister was born when I was 17 months old. Our parents didn't want either of us, but Mom seemed to accept Megan more than she accepted me. I developed stomach cramps and went to the hospital at least five times. Just before I started first grade at the end of World War II, Dad was called into the Navy. Afterward, we ended up in Massachusetts, way out in the country on a farm with 10,000 chickens. I was nine when a neighbor invited my sister and me to vacation Bible school, and I learned about Jesus, sin, and the Ten Commandments. During revival, the pastor's wife sat right beside me. If you sense the Lord is talking to you, go down to the altar, and I'll go with you. Okay. Kneel here with me, Dee. Because of Adam's sin, we were born sinners and cannot save ourselves. That's why Jesus came to save us. Let me pray with you now. When I went home and told my folks that I was saved, they were indifferent. I knew that the fear, 
anger and abuse my sister and I endured did not reflect godly character. I was entering sixth grade when we moved to Kansas so dad could get a college degree. Dad beat me until I was 14 and stood up to him. I made it to 16 and my sister was 15 as we compared notes. How many moves is this now? About 20. <laughs> We've been to more than 20 schools. At least I have only two more years to go. Oh, I hate school. I'm gonna quit. Oh, if Dad would just buy you glasses, you'd like school. He won't even buy us shoes when we need them. Megan, if you quit, I'm gonna try to go away and do my senior year at a Christian school. I can't stand to be here alone with them. I don't blame you. Who wants to listen to Mom scream at Dad? I finished my senior year at a Christian school, strengthening my faith. Meanwhile, my sister married and had a baby. I wanted to go to nursing school, but Mom refused. And it's hard to overcome a lifetime of scorn. I moved to Florida to be with my sister, hoping to attend Bible college. Then Mom persuaded Dad to give up his job and also move to Florida. Once again, I was locked in a miserable family situation, too poor to be on my own. I took dinner to Mom in bed. Your father doesn't love me, Dee. He gave up a good job to move here, Mom. He did that for you. Oh, he did that to be closer to Megan and her baby. He loves you. He'll never love me because I made him marry me. And I can't divorce him because I can't make enough money to live on. A year later, my sister and her husband moved to California. So we all packed up and moved to the West Coast because our own family was all we knew. My parents wanted to open an old folks home, so the pastor of the church my sister attended let my parents have the empty parsonage, rent-free for a year to get started. We moved into the parsonage, but as soon as my room was needed for a guest, I had to vacate and rent a room with a widow I didn't even know. For two years, I chafed in a dreary job, teaching Sunday school and praying for a godly husband. I wanted to serve the Lord. You said you'd be here right after work. Traffic was bad. What did you want, anyway? Are you getting married to that young man you're dating? No, he's not a believer. And God tells us not to be unequally yoked. You're a fool. You'll never do any better. Mom? I plan to sell my car and move back to Missouri to go to Bible college. Leave a good job and do something like that? You're an idiot. I want to learn chalk talk to serve the Lord. Ugh, foolishness. I tested high in imagination. You're unbalanced, Dee, that's what. You ruined our marriage. I'm going to Bible college. You do that and we won't support you in any way. We'll disown you. <laughs> once I ignored my mother. I had seen my parents only at Christmas anyway for three years. I didn't want to burden my sister by telling her my troubles, so I sold my car and traveled to Missouri with another couple. At college, I worked hard for minimum wage, often going hungry. But that's where I met Wally, who had been there two years. Would you like half my sandwich, Dee? I'm not hungry. Thank you, Wally. You're a gem. I'm a miracle, Dee. I was born with cerebral palsy. The doctors wanted my folks to warehouse me in an institution, but they didn't. Your life must have been very hard. Oh, you have no idea. Bullied, low expectations. But I was determined to live a normal life. I was the second fastest runner in grade school. Really? Oh, that's wonderful. I like your spunk, Wally. Then in the eighth grade, I caught polio. That must have been devastating, but you overcame that too, obviously. By the grace of God. I had a hard childhood too. I mean, not like yours, but hard. 
My parents never showed love to me. Just the opposite. Dad often beat me for no reason, and once my mom said she hated me. I'm sorry, Dee. I went to 20 different schools in 13 years. Couldn't make friends, except for Jesus. Friend that sticks closer than a brother. Life can be so lonely. I'll be your friend, Dee, if you want me. Wally and I became good friends that first semester. I loved being at Bible college, memorizing scripture, learning about God's faithfulness. And I loved Wally because he loved the Lord and was such an overcomer. But I soon ran out of money. Why don't we get married, Dee? Pull our money and help each other. That was not a very romantic Proposal, Wally. I'm serious. You want to serve God by helping young people, and so do I. Yes, I'll marry you. You will? Great. Oh, you deserve so much, Dee. I promise I'll work hard to provide for us. I've always worked hard to succeed. I can tell. And when I worked at the factory one summer, everyone else was laid off except me, because I had memorized where all the parts were located. You don't have to convince me, Wally. I'm very impressed by your work habits. And I've been offered a job managing the motel on the highway. A big apartment comes with a job. Just before we married, the motel owner gave the job to someone else to whom he owed a debt. But he gave us a room to live in. We were disappointed at the job loss, but grateful for the room. When I was expecting our first baby, Wally bought us a small mobile home. Well, tell me why the dean's office wanted to see you today, Wally. You won't believe it, honey. What? I have to withdraw from the college. Why? Your grades are excellent. They don't want my handicap to embarrass them if I become a minister. You can't be serious. You mean they're ashamed of you? Yes, They don't want me to be able to say I graduated here. Oh, Jesus would never say that. They should be proud of you. Doesn't matter. We can share Christ on our own. This was the early 60s, when handicapped people had few protections, and the body of Christ could have been leading the way as examples of Christ's love. Wally had a job selling insurance. God gave us a daughter, and when she was four months old, we decided to move to California, where his parents and mine lived. Wally's job transferred him to the West Coast, but our challenges were just beginning. We'll hear more about those challenges in just a moment. Here's the president of Pacific Garden Mission, Phil Kwiatkowski. Thanks, Timothy. How devastating for a mother whose husband rejects her, making her leave with small children. Where can she go? How can she survive alone? Homeless women and children today are doubly vulnerable, but we have a place for them at Pacific Garden Mission. In our Mothers with Children and Women's Division, we have space for 300 overnight guests and more for Mothers with Children who need to stay longer. If you'd like to help, they have an ongoing need for diapers, wipes, toiletries, cribs, and mattresses, since we are opening a new dorm soon. Go to our website, pgm.org, and see the many ways to help these women. We provide nourishing meals and fresh clothing, but most of all, we give them peace of mind, security while they adjust to their perplexing circumstances. Prayer and counseling helps them find peace in the midst of turmoil. Our Mothers with Children ministry has transformed many broken lives into women who go out with new purpose, unafraid to face the future because they have someone to counsel and guide them. For more information, write to Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. After God helped us sell our mobile home, 
We rented a small trailer and off we drove to California, eager to serve the Lord and introduce the grandparents to our new daughter. When we arrived, we learned that Wally's parents were getting divorced. So we lived at first with Wally's grandmother. My parents came to visit. Oh, our business is doing great, but we sure could use someone to relieve us so we can get away now and then. I could help you. You're handicapped. Wally is very skilled at many things, Mom. He had the high score in math tests in his high school. And he's proved himself in many jobs. Well, if you can demonstrate your ability, we'll hire you to run things. Wally improved their business so much during the next three years that my folks bought a new place. Enlarging the business from 15 beds to 60, as doctors referred more patients. Our minds were set on serving God, so we shared Jesus with everyone. We also taught junior high at church. One night, as we were walking to worship service, we ran into a couple seeking help. We're on our way to church, but how can we help you? Maybe we should go with you. We're on the verge of splitting up. I can't help you, but Jesus can. <laughs> if Jesus is real, he wouldn't help me. I've spent my life mocking him. Why don't you come to church with us and see for yourself? They did attend services with us, and Wally led him to Christ that night. Meanwhile, my parents were trying to sell a former home and couldn't, so we moved in since we were expecting our second baby. Of course, my folks charged us rent, but didn't pay Wally enough, so we took in boarders to help cover expenses. Finally, Wally had to do something. You're quitting. I knew I couldn't rely on you. How can you say that? Wally does everything. He handles the payroll for 18 employees, the clients, the doctors, everything. You're taking more vacations now than you've ever taken in your life. We deserve it. We started this business and worked hard. Yes, you did. What do you want anyway, Wally? Honesty. An employer who pays taxes and social security for their workers. How we run our business is none of your business. You're right. So I'll get a different job. You'll never find another job. Without us, you're nothing. Not long after Wally quit working for my parents, they divorced. Mother took half the assets and left. Wally found a job driving patients for a hospital. But he began having dizziness and the hospital let him go, afraid his dizzy episodes would endanger the patients. The only job Wally could find was playing Santa Claus as Christmas approached. But his loving demeanor attracted more crowds than the dying mall had ever seen. Grief and troubles are part of life, and we had our share. We went on welfare so Wally could have surgery for his dizziness. Afterward, he still couldn't work. I learned to make puppets to teach kids in Sunday school, and then I wrote scripts for the lessons. God was using the talents he gave me, and the classes grew and grew. Two years passed. My cousin in Wisconsin thinks we should go there and find work. They have jobs there? So he says. I'm willing if God is. I've been praying about it, Dee. My cousin says we can stay with them until we get a place. We'll have to sell this house. But it's gone up in value. It'll sell. I don't want to be on welfare, Dee. I want to work, and the Lord is opening a door for me. After much prayer, we sold our house in California and moved to Wisconsin. Wally had a job lined up before we moved there working for the state. When you live for God's will instead of living just for yourself... God opens doors for you. Many in Wally's family came to know Christ while we lived there, even his mom and sister and her husband. My dad had remarried and moved to Northern California. He came to visit us in Wisconsin, and we went camping together. This is great, Dee. 
We should have done more of this when you girls were little. Yeah. I guess the chicken farm doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> that was a low point. If I could live my life over, I'd do a lot of things differently. God only gives us one go at life. And I'm glad. I almost missed out on God. Until one of the neighbors up there talked to me about Jesus. And I'm sure grateful he did. Me too. Has your mother ever come to visit? One time. She left after two hours. Mm. Couldn't stand to see how well you guys were doing after she said Wally would fail. God has always provided for us. <sighs> I never understood that woman. Why she was so unhappy. Me neither. We try to make her happy. She needs the Lord. Right after our youngest daughter graduated high school and left home, Wally lost the job he'd held for nine years. We could have gone under, but then my dad died, leaving me an inheritance. I bought land, built a duplex, and we lived in one side and rented the other. I worked at a county hospital for the handicapped and aged. Wally was unable to work, as his cerebral palsy, polio, and now diabetes took their toll. After 20 years in Wisconsin, we moved to Florida. Hello? Hey, Dee, are you all settled? Oh, yes, Megan. We're living with and taking care of a woman who had an accident and is brain damaged. Oh, I couldn't do that. We all have different gifts from God. Who's paying for all this care? Her husband. Is she old? No, no, she's young and very pretty. We have to protect her from men when we take her places. Do you like this work? Yes. Wally and I are teaching her to use the washing machine and do dishes. So she's able to learn then? Yes. You have such a heart for others. Speaking of others, how's Mom doing? Oh, I had to put her in a nursing home. I couldn't take care of her. Too bad she divorced Dad. She wishes now she hadn't. Keep me posted on how she's doing? She asked me if God would forgive her for all the evil she did, and I told her yes if she asks him to forgive her. She was off balance, but we always forgave her. What do you mean, off balance? A balanced mind is Christ-centered, not self-centered. During that time, I visited Mom in the nursing home before she died. But she couldn't answer my questions about why she treated us so badly. Most people see nothing wrong with following their own whims. Hurricanes began hitting Florida, so we moved to South Carolina to be near our daughter. I worked at Walmart to get some benefits, but Wally couldn't work at all. Then, in 2007, came an unexpected windfall. Someone from the state of Wisconsin called while you were at work. What about? They're giving me retirement benefits. They are? They've been searching for us for five years. Oh, this is amazing. The money was invested and has grown. We could take a lump sum or we can take monthly payments. Oh, Wally, this is a blessing from God. Yes. Remember how the council members laughed at us because we trusted in God? We have the last laugh. We took the monthly payments, bought a house that we fixed to help Wally, and I retired. We continued to serve in the church, especially with our puppets. In 2011, the owner of a Christian television station in town wanted to interview us. I'm told you have a puppet ministry that is Christian. We do. My wife created the puppets and wrote the scripts that are based on biblical events and people. Would you be interested in doing a program for broadcast here? That would be wonderful. We've only performed these in Sunday school classes and church. We won't do it live. We'll pre-record it. Good. There isn't any financial backing for this. Well, we'll do it for God's glory. We have a friend who is talented in acting character parts. Oh, good.
Good. Uh, bring him along. What do we need to know? We'll do the whole production in one take. So if you make any mistakes, we won't stop and redo the program. Ooh. That's a challenge. You can do it, Dee. Could I see the set? Oh, you'll need to provide that as well. Let me know when you're ready, and we'll set a time. Wally wanted me to do all the writing timing and everything as he knew I could with God's help. I used an oil painting I had done years before as the inspiration for set design and storyline. Our choir director volunteered to help with the production. We never met to practice, but God did a remarkable job in making everything fit. Wally was thrilled at doing his own program that was broadcast on television. years later, my beloved Wally went home to the Lord. He had unconditional love from me and our three daughters. I still live in our home and mow my own lawn. I'm grateful that God used me to love and help others. Knowing that God wanted me is what carried me through. We love him because he first loved us. Listening friend, have you experienced the liberating love of Christ? He didn't come to condemn us. He came to give us life. The Gospel of John chapter 3 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Receive Christ now by praying with us. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins on the cross, rose again, and lived to save me now. Save me, Lord. Come into my life and change me. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us know you prayed, and we'll send you some literature to help you walk in new life. The address is Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607.